Hey guys, you're watching the best damn comic show, the San Diego Comic Con pre edition. We're not really going to be talking about Comic Con, I'm just joking about that. But, uh, real quick, short episode. It's going to be a busy week for us. Make sure to check out the channel because we're going to have a lot of Comic Con footage, action figures, uh, whatever panels we can get to, etc., etc., cosplayers. It's you know. not me, it's just him and Dan. Yeah, yeah, whatever. He, he, he's anti Comic Con now. He's I got to run a many. business. Yeah. <laughs> for me, I, I hate this week. Well, it's dead, right? Nobody oh, comes to the store. Everybody's <laughs> gone. Starting. <laughs> Starting Wednesday morning. Right. So yeah, I'm opening. I open every year that week of that Wednesday. I'm always open like as early as possible to catch everybody Try on their to get way out before of, they go to know. preview night. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's a week that I wanted to go by real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till they do the flop, I, and it's gonna happen. I can't wait for San Diego Comic Con to come to LA and WonderCon go, Wonder go to San Diego. That would actually be pretty cool. It's, okay. You're gonna see it uh, soon. Well, that would have benefit you because... It would benefit me because then everybody's yeah, in town. You get yeah. those people that want to look at all the local shops But it's well. gonna happen. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen soon. I mean, it's such a mess. Every year I go, it's there's worse more, worse. more people. I think I think my what I'm, what I'm thinking is... I, I know a few years ago they were talking about moving to downtown LA because mm -hmm. it's a bigger convention center. The problem was downtown LA was announcing that they were going to revamp the place. Right. So they're like, why am I, you know, tear it down because of the stadium? Why am I going to move if I'm going to have to find another place? Yeah. Or? So I think what's going to happen is, I don't know exactly what's happening with the Ram Stadium, but I know it's going to be a huge complex and might have a convention center. Right. And if it's huge enough, bigger than San Diego, once that's done in 2020 something. I think it's gonna be done uh, year after next. Yeah, yeah, I think you might see a switch at that point where they'll send WonderCon to San Diego where WonderCon can fit in the convention center. Mm -hmm. It'll be like the old days for Comic-Con where it was a comic show, you have people, you have guys with comics, they can build that and then Comic-Con will come to LA most likely in that Inglewood convention, you know, wherever this, the Ram Stadium is gonna be whatever they're gonna build. I think if it's big enough, right. they'll go there. I think so. I mean, it'll be an end of an era. I feel bad for the city of San Diego because that's really the only the only reason why people go to San Diego is for Comic-Con and you know, maybe a weekend trip here and there. But San Diego it's too itself, expensive, it's, bro. I mean, parking, 60 to $100. Yeah, yeah. You can't walk. You've gotta wait two, three hours to eat. I'm mean, just like, it's freaking ridiculous. It's gotten so bad that all the the uh, the uh, installations outside are packed with people as well. Like, exactly. you, the whole gas lamp area is just basically shut down. You're shoulder to shoulder the entire time. It's, it's, it's uh, I don't know. More news. Just one big news item this week. So the the uh, contract uh, specifications for the Sony Disney MCU uh, collaboration came out, and there's a stipulation by Sony that said that the second Spider-Man movie had to break a billion dollars, or else Sony takes the rights back to Spider-Man. Um, as for right, as the way it was set up now was Sony doesn't do anything. They but just collect. They just collect the money from the Spider-Man films, the solo films, and then Marvel keeps the, the team films that feature Spider-Man. But if this second film, Far From Home, doesn't break a billion dollars, Sony takes back the creative rights. I don't know if that cancels the collaboration between the universes, but uh, it's got me a little worried. You know, I know it's it's opened really well. It opened worldwide at 600 million, so it's probably going to break a billion. But if for whatever reason it slows down, it doesn't. Yeah, but well, is, let's say it passes. Is there a stipulation for the third one, or is just for the second one? I think uh, I think yeah, they'll make a third movie. Yeah, but is the stipulation? I mean. Does the third one have to break a billion dollars too, or is just the number two in order for Marvel to continue? I think it's just the number two, and I think Kevin Feige he did that specifically because he knew the first one wasn't going to break a billion. Like he knew because it was the, the first, the first movie. one. Yeah. And the first movies don't tend to do as well as the second ones. I mean, I'm hearing good. I haven't seen Spider-Man yet, but I'm hearing really good things about it. Jake Gyllenhaal, I heard he's killing it. I mean, opening weekend six. I mean, it could. I don't see why not. Right, right. I mean, I like to know what's after. If there's some other stipulation, what I what what boggles the mind for me is that Sony, you had your chance, you put out, you know, a couple. I never liked any of them, but a couple people liked, like you know, the my favorite one was the the one with Doc Ock. 
I think that's Spider-Man. Alfred yeah. Molina. I mean, he right. killed that role right. as Doc Ock. I mean, he, that's the only reason that movie is worth watching right. is him. Other than that... But there's a reason why they tried to reboot the franchise. So, I, if you're just sitting there collecting money off of someone else's work, I don't understand why. Ego. I, yeah, it's a, a total, complete ego thing. And they did that with the Venom movie, you know, which is... Uh, I, I don't like the movie. Cat doesn't like I, the movie, but... I, I guess a lot of other people like the movie. I guess we're in this I house. think I think a lot of non-comic book fans like the movie because it was a cheesy action film. It's you know, so bad. That's yeah. like I mean, what a waste! <laughs> what a waste of actor on on that role. I mean, whatever. Well, but uh, hopefully, I mean, if if we do some sort of crossover, it'd be interesting to see who would be in charge of, of the writing. And to the think crossover. this could all have been avoided if Marvel didn't run out of money in court years ago. Because that's how they lost Spider-Man. They were in court with Sony. They were gonna. They looked like, for what I hear, they looked like they were gonna win, but they ran out of money, so they had to pull back, and Sony ended up with the rights. Right. All right, Cat Picks of the Week. What do you got this uh, um, Comic Con? <laughs> quiet week. Teen Titans 32. Lobo's in it. Fight out. You know, drag out fight with Crush and which is cool with a tie, which so is fun. good. Um, I think we might see a hint who, at who the mom is. Right. So if, and a couple weeks back, you talked about Harley's little black book. You know, is there been movement on that? Have you seen anything? I think there was a little bit of movement on it, but right now it's kind of it's kind of quiet. Yeah. But but I know there's a list out there of potential moms, but logically that's the only one that comes in mind. I mean, right. if anything else, it's out of left field. I'll be like, whoa, yeah, I, I missed that uh, that hookup. But uh, I'll be Teen Times 32. I've really been enjoying Bernard's work on that. Adam's always a great storyteller. And I'm moving over to Marvel, and we're a week away from Hickman. I was hoping it would hit the week of Comic Con, but right. it's the week after. But this week, that means got, they might be there's going to be some, exclu- at some yeah, some exclusive or announcements. But this week, next this week, you're going to have Age of X Men Omega. You got X Force number ten and Uncanny X Men twenty two, and all three books are going to come to some kind of head. Again, leading it off towards um, right towards Hickman and uh, I mean they all. I've been enjoying all three you know runs so far. I mean especially Rosenberg's Uncanny X Men run has been delicious. I love. I've been loving Brisson's X Force. Mm. I mean I'm liking that. And X the Age of X Men has been interesting, but again I'm ready for Hickman. <laughs> right. So I got that. I've. I've talked about Chip Zdarsky's inv- Invaders before, and I'm really liking the Invaders, and I'm really liking what they're doing with Namor, making him that badass, kind of propelling him to the front. Again, are we expecting a movie appearance for Namor? Mm-hmm. Black Panther 2, there was a hint of an underwater quake in Endgame. Right. Again, we all know that Hickman, the, the movies are based on Hickman's run of yeah. Avengers, and Hickman did write a story of Wakanda versus Atlantis where you know Atlantis sinks Wakanda so you know it could be could be something to look at but cool as a read it's a really cool yeah. read Silver Surfer Black Donny Cates that number one that second print on number one is going crazy right because it's got an awesome cover it's got an awesome yeah. Diodato cover and again it's tying into the Venom mm-hmm. mythos and you know what else and um, love again talking about Chip Zdarsky I love Daredevil. The Daredevil book's been really great. There's that first appearance of the cop, the second print, where it's just him on the cover. Mm -hmm. That's going crazy because of low print run. And the last book, I mean, that's gonna be probably my first read of the week, is gonna be Immortal Hulk 21. And I'm a broken record with that (laughs) book, but man, it's just, especially after number 20 with that, that, you know, ending with Bruce Banner, where is heaven? There's a a first appearance of another character in that too. I mean, it's just, uh, it's killing it with the Immortal Hulk. So, Immortal Hulk. Yeah, get so. on it, guys. Uh, every issue, I'm assuming the print run's going up because people, it is going yeah. up, but it's still selling out every right. issue because you got uh, two weeks later, there's a second print popping. Right. So, so Immortal Hulk. Over that. <laughs> you know, but that those are those are my my reads for next week. All right, this for me this week. Uh, I I feel like Marvel, knowing because it was Comic Con, just decided not to put out any like super. Well, that awesome might be your test this week. My maybe t- my your taste, you know, maybe the article cover is just being super thicky. Right. Well, I'll have to do a cat's pick at the way yeah. of the right <laughs> He can put it up on Instagram if you want to see that. You can follow that. Uh, follow us cover of the week. But yeah, no, I, I'm surprised because Marvel usually puts out uh, a lot of good stuff. This week they're a little light. Uh, same thing with DC. Uh, you're the villain. 
covers. There's a Batman number 75, which is weird because they put Batman out last week. But I know. Uh, there's a Bane Delato portrait, which is really cool. Uh, Nightwing 62. There's a Greg Capullo Talon. Hey, what happened with that whole Delato drama months? Remember last year with him copying? No, that you're thinking was that. there that's Matina. Matina. Oh, that's Matina. Yeah, Matina, okay. yeah. Uh, and then uh, Alex Garner, Teen Titans number 32. Because of the Lobo and Crash both being on the cover and potentially some juicy stuff coming out of this issue, I think this is what probably the book you want to pick up uh, from DC. Capullo's doing Nightwing? He's just doing the cover. I know. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's yeah, but it's cool. Talon. It's a Talon portrait. But still, because he Night did Talon and Batman Year One. Oh, yeah, right. 52, right, yeah. and the Owl, uh, Court of Owls. Court of Owls. Uh, but DC, you know, pick up what you like. Uh, kind of, kind of limited. I remember the the their variants for this month, at least for the f year of the villain. They went, they're up a buck because of the card stock. So they're not your regular three ninety nine cover price. They're four ninety nine. So it could be a less availability on the market because right. of that. You know, because they're more expensive. Also, be, look at those things very closely because there's going to be a lot of nine point nines and ten point zeros, and you don't want to be the guy stuck with the nine point six if for some reason. But yeah, they're real pretty. Yeah. Um, and then finally, Spy uh, Marvel one book, Spider Man City at War. It, this is based on the video game, right? Right. Uh, so it's not a mini series. Not a lot of people are, are, are big on the 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 the, uh, the book, but I like the cover by David Nakayama. Is it a ratio variant? It's a ratio variant. Yeah, so it's one a ratio in variant. fifty most likely. Well, seventeen on Midtown, so it's got. Oh, actually, it's less. It's than one in twenty-five then. Yeah, one in twenty-five. Yeah, so it's a nice cover. Just, but I like Nakayama. Yeah, Nakayama's great. And uh, it's just a cool cover, you know. I, I like it, and maybe something might have legs in the future because you I, never I know. I don't think a lot of people order in this book. Nah, you know, it's because because it's tied into the video game. Right. So it is what it is. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. You know the drill. Smash that like button, leave comments, let us know what you think. Make sure to check out our Comic Con exclusive videos this week. Cat, take us away. Have fun in San Diego, but make sure you guys go pick up your books before you head down south. Help your dealer, local dealer out. Don't let them strand it with with extra books that next week. See you guys in two.